Alright guys, what's going on? This is Patrick. Adam. Elliot. And this is your NRW giving you the NEW, the New Release Wednesday show. And, you know, I want to kind of start a little song like, you know, we talked a little bit earlier and it made me very sad, made me very sad. Um, made me realize about myself and I think making us all realize about ourselves. So why don't you fill them in, Adam? So what's getting us all down here? Hopefully it's getting everybody down. Not in a good way, but uh, one of our generation's best, Kevin Smith, suffered a massive heart attack on Sunday night, uh, actually while filming his comedy special. So he had finished the first round. Um, just real quick, he's okay for now. Um, so don't be freaking out too much. But keep sending him positive thoughts and uh, anything you can. But essentially, he, Sunday night, he was doing his uh, stand-up special, his yeah. first one. Yeah. Um, then in between tapings, he felt a little lightheaded, nauseous. Yeah. Uh, said he threw up a couple times, didn't feel any better. Then all of a sudden, started sweating buckets. Yeah. And decided at that point, you know what? Maybe you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Come to find out, he was having a massive heart attack. Apparently, I don't remember what it's still called, but they, they call, call it, it the, the Widowmaker. Widow yeah. yeah. Had 100% blockage. Um, so he put a post up on Instagram that was very surreal and... It, it takes a lot to unsettle me, and it kind of unsettled me. Only because it yeah. was a man at terms with death knocking on his door and answering the door. Um, not trying to hide. So wow. um, I've never thought myself... I mean, I don't think I'm scared of death, but just to see people like that, like, he's bigger than life for us. Yeah. Like, you never would thought think this. Um, I mean, yes, he's a heavy guy and stuff like that, and he's done things to change his life, but I mean... As an icon, a person, just... I, I, He's one of my idols. You know? I mean, no, yeah, he yeah. is a he is the epitome of a guy that started from down here and walked his way up to here. Yeah. So like, he yeah. did it all on his own, and then I mean, hopefully he recovers well. I know just through their duo of him and Jason Mewes, there there's a terrible rags to riches story with Jason Mewes as well with drugs yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. I mean, maybe lightning can strike twice in that amazing duo. Um, yeah. Because we were supposed to get a Jansen and Bob reboot, so I yeah. do want that to happen, but. First and foremost, we want uh, Kevin just to be healthy. Yeah, just be healthy, just and be happy. Person. Yeah, yeah, be there for your family. I mean, yeah. I understand that you were ready, but no family wants to be without. No. Then you know, my father had a, a series of heart attacks when I was younger too. Yeah. This is a terrifying time, and I know everyone is worried about Kevin Smith, worried about his family too. You know, this has to be a very tough time for them. There's going to be a life, a lot of life changes coming for his entire household. You know, the diet's going to have to change. They're going to have to watch what they put in their own cooking. You know, yeah. this is a huge life adjustment. And my heart goes out to all of them because this can't be easy. It never is easy. But I'm glad he survived to go through this work he has to do. Yeah. You know, it's always better to do the work and be alive the next morning mm -hmm. than to not be here. And I'm so glad that he is. And my heart goes out to all of them because I've been there. I know how this is. I'm glad my dad survived, and I have no doubt Kevin Smith will too. So, yeah, uh, it's funny. We were the other night, uh, you know, with Walking Dead coming back, Comic Book Men came back. They dropped a new episode, and my wife and I were watching it, and they were. It was a very emotional episode because uh, they were uh, covering uh, this documentary. That well, not documentary. They actually there's this film called Shooting Clerks, okay. which is basically kind of a biopic. On Kevin Smith coming up with clerks and everything, and it was very all, all the credit card that he went into to make it. Yeah, <laughs> but at the end of the episode, you know, of Comic Book Man, you know, Kevin, they're at the premiere, and he's talking about seeing himself and seeing his life on camera. And now, I don't, I don't know if I saw that the thing that happened to Kevin until last night, night or this morning or whatever, or when did it come? The news it, break. Uh, at one, so I read it, it Monday kinda, morning. Yeah. So, I, I think I just recently learned it, but just that connection, he was. Crying and it, it touched me, you know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a softie now. I got a little girl and just family and just friends and you know these relationships that we build. And Kevin's one of those writers, and that's why he's inspires me and why he's one of my idols. His whole the the Jersey verse, yeah. you know that he's he's done with his films, his writing, the people he involves. He likes to work with his friends his, and he when he has his click, he works with his click and he tries to help. He's just that kind of a guy that I hope to be, you know. And I'm blessed to have you guys and you and I and we've all known each other for years. That's you know this is because the kind of guys like Kevin yeah you know you want to work with people you know and you, you you feel and you can relate to and that's the kind of giving I and it just it makes me sad but I I know I'm hopeful and you know with what he wrote I didn't re read that initial tweet but I saw a picture of him in bed yeah and then just I think it was an aftermath tweet that well that you know, was, I think that was the one that, you're yeah. thinking of. well the, the one like I said was an Instagram post but it's okay just, it's just his face the one you're thinking of okay but then a wall of text and I mean a wall wow. of text so I didn't read all of that yeah. it was a heart wrenching wall of text. wow yeah. Yeah. oh my gosh yeah. it's gonna make me cry it might a little softy I mean I'm a softie, like I said like I said the the, 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 the man was like it's okay to cry yeah. as he put it yeah. 
if de- if it was my time, I was ready to pay the tab because yeah. he understood that he's lived a fast and hard life, and it might catch up to him. Right. Well, we love you, Kevin. We hope you get well. We thank you for everything you've done for us, but we're not ready for you to go yet. We want you to keep fighting. It's Nucci Boochies. And the whole family. <laughs> so uh, much love to you, Kevin. Um, now to bring things over from the solemn to the positive. Um, hey! <laughs> sorry for that transition. Um, but uh, Black Panther, we all enjoyed Black Panther, right? Super cool. Yeah. We loved it. I, y- y'all know. Y'all been watching. You've seen, follow, if you follow me, I, I, it's changed my world and my life. I, I love it. I feel good uh, every time I see it. I've seen it probably five times now. <laughs> it's a bit excessive. A bit excessive when it just came out like a week or two ago. Yeah. I but know. I love it. It's one of my favorite superhero films. If not my favorite, it is my favorite superhero film of all time. And in probably one of my favorite films of all time. So, um, moving on. A uh, good friend of mine, um, she runs a uh, an amazing business. She started a new business. Um, what is the name of the business? Uh, BlackWillTravel.com and Exo Voyage are bringing you tours to Wakanda. Essentially, uh, hmm. now, you know, there's a new African-American renaissance with everybody feeling inspired. And, you know, a lot of people that were uh, are of African-American descent came to the screenings in their dashikis and all dressed out because, you know, it's it's a... It was a film that helped bring say, back some pride. Some of the most spectacular cosplay oh my God. of the year at some of these premieres. Beautiful. And so, you and know... It, done fast and on a budget, too. How do you do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've had fo- they've had set photos for months. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But a lot of pride. You know, sometimes, oh, no, yeah. you, know you, 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 you love USA, but you also love where you're from. You know, I'm an American, and I'm proud to be an American, but I'm also Filipino, and I love my Filipino roots. So for a lot of African Americans, getting in touch with where they came from... I like Filipino food. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so uh, it's just an amazing thing, you know. So they're getting this together. Let me let me read what they wrote to, for me. Uh, you've seen the film now. Blackwilltravel.com and Exo Village are bringing you tours to Wakanda. Experience authentic areas in Africa shown in the Black Panther comics and movie believed to be Wakanda. Tours are beginning this June of 2018, and they actually sent me a little clip. Um, we're going to show it to you right now, and after you're done with that, and after you're done with watching this episode, go to Wakanda.com. You see it right there. It's go to Wakanda.com, which will give you further information, but we'll send you to this clip right now. Check it out. Go to Wakanda. The world is changing. Soon, there will only be the conqueror. And we're back. I just want to say that that was really cool, but it kind of reminded me of like a cultural thing I had because I grew up Jewish. I am Jewish. And there was this one trip I went on. It's called the Birthright Trip where they sent me to Israel to learn about my roots. Oh my gosh. And this seems like the Birthright Trip, but for black kids. And that's amazing. Yes. Because you need that. Yes. Like to see other places in the world and to get that sense of scale and that sense of, you know, I. There are other people like me in the world. Yeah. It's just a really fulfilling moment for me. Yeah, so. I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. One of my goals in life being Filipino, and I'll be sure to bring you some food. And shoot, why don't you come with me? I want, I've never I been want to the Philippines. Let's go. I want to visit the Philippines. I want to go to my quote unquote <laughs> homeland. I, I want to go to the Philippines too, but not during the 120 degree. That is of the true. Year. I'm not ready for that heat. I'm pretty but, sure it's like six months of the year it's that freaking hot. But that's when all this good sailing is. <laughs> That's fine. I'm there to eat, not sail. We're ready to eat. We're going to grab the big spoon and fork off the wall because you know that's what we do, Filipinos. And we're going to chow down, brother. That's right. So, yes, uh, I think it's awesome. Go to Wakanda.com. You see it on the screen. Check that out. Um, another cool thing uh, that I was made aware of from my friend on Facebook, Matt Haley. You know him. He was an image in Marvel and DC comic artist. He is also dabbling in film. And he has an awesome project called okay. Black Star Warrior uh, with a company he's, uh, that he's working with called Dust. Um, to give you a little synopsis, in a 1970s version of the future, an egotistical space detective struggles to solve his biggest missing person's case, finding his birth mother. And basically when Matt reached out to me, he was like, this is the Lando film that we may not get yet, but I'm going to give it to you right now. Let's check out the trailer. Here we go. Black Star Warrior. Friday, blast into the future with the baddest dude in the galaxy. Tyson must save a beautiful space pirate from the hypnotic evil clutches of a psychotic cult leader and his army of slave women. <laughs> Lucky bastard. While searching for his long lost mother. Oh, this ought to be good. You hear me, space? Your ass best be prepared for a hostile makeover. Sorry. <laughs> Black Star Warrior. Then, Laszlo and Tequila get a job with the universe. Dude. Not bad. Pretty sweet. 
I need to see this. If we don't get Lando after Solo, then here we go. You know I mean, what I'm saying? But when's it come out? I want to see it now. <laughs> Patience. Virtual. One thing I'm not good at. All right. Well, guess what? <laughs> the first episode, that was just the trailer. The first episode of Black Star Warrior is available now. What? Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> So where can I watch it? In your face, yeah. patience. So until we get the Lando film, we got Black Star. Where, where can I watch it? Um, I think Dust.com. It's also on Facebook. Look up Dust. I'm going to put the link. Look, it's on the screen. It's coming for our us. <laughs> Don't get hurt. So check it out. Shout out to Matt Haley. Shout out to the Dust team. Check out Black Star Warrior. It's Lando until we get Lando. And you know what? It might even be better than Lando, I might say. It may not have the special effects budget that Lando may have. I, mean, I don't know. Can, are you really going to be Don Glover as Lando? Hey, and you know what? True. Much respect to Black Star Warrior, my man, Matt Haley. But, you know, if we get Donald Glover, Don Glover as Lando. I mean, he already is Lando. I'm, well, I'm saying in his own solo film outside of Solo. Yeah, I mean, yeah. once he steals the show, it won't be a problem. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Adam is what I'm talking about. All right. So, if you're not going to Wakanda.com and you're not checking out uh, Black Star Warrior from my friends, much love to them. And, again, much love to Kevin Smith. We want to tell you what's coming out this week. That you can see in NRW theaters. And what you can see in theaters. And my boy Elliot's going to break it down. All right. So the first thing. I got to give you the right page. Uh, thank you. Helping him out. Producer. The first thing we have uh, coming out is Red Sparrow. Um, ballerina Dominika uh, Egorova. Yeah, that's a wild name. Russian names. Can Insert you Russian it? name here. <laughs> I'm actually, actually better with uh, Russian names. Really? I have to go into the accent though. So well, the Dominika with the Russian accent. Egorova. I mean, that's... Dominica Aregorova. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> gets recruited to Sparrow School, a Russian, uh, a Russian intelligence uh, service where they train her basically to be a spy, but female spy. and hot. Um, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, starring Jennifer Lawrence and Joel Egerton. Um, honestly, I really want to see this because it kind of feels like the Black Widow standalone film we're not going to get. I'm saying. It does look dope. Yeah. Yeah, Joel Edgerton, too, who I love, is a great actor, but Jennifer Lawrence, man, girl, you got my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm actually more excited about Joel Edgerton. Huh? I'm more excited about Joel Edgerton. He's really? good. Oh, I, like I, know you, I know you like Joel more than... I mean, I'm just saying, I, <laughs> I, I enjoy a stronger performance compared to something to look at. Not saying that she does bad she's work. Got, she's got skills. I mean, she got skills, but not... Okay, Joel Edgerton is a great actor. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I last time in Bright, wasn't yeah. he mm -hmm. the, the yeah. other guy in he Bright? He was the orc. Yeah, yeah. Did a great, great job, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he got blooded by the end. That's true, but he came back. Oops, yeah. spoiler! That's not what blooded means, Patrick. Oh, no. oh! But you know what? I'm, I thought you were referring. Uh, now you, you know what? But it's yeah. a good. It's a good. Right. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I love you, though, Alan. More than Joel Edgerton, I love you more than Joel. Livid. They're they're they're, they're part of my green skin. Inside. But <laughs> yeah, really loud. But Red Sparrow, yes, I think it looks dope, and it is probably well, the. Again, I'm going to see it you know? because it looks fantastic, and it's everything yeah. I want out of like a Russian spy. Play. But you can't, yeah. but with everybody knowing Black Widow, you can't not think you that. You can't not think that, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, no, I mean, just like the Atomic Blonde movie that came out a while ago. Yeah. That's, that whenever you see insert badass woman that is doing, you know, spy kind of stuff, we're just going to think Black Widow because there's so much demand for it. And yeah. I mean, if they want to put the time and effort into it and do it right, not make it some, like, because I'm worried that, I'm worried that if they do a Black Widow movie, they're going to do what they've been doing in comic books, where they're going to take these female-centric characters and be like, well, here's the 14-year-old version of it. It's mm -hmm. like, well, no, we're not trying yeah. to sell it to 14-year-old girls. They're, if 14-year-old girls are reading comic books, it's not because they're being catered to them. It's because they like the way comic books are. Tell it, brother. I mean, Tell that's it. all that it matters. Yeah. Is you don't People like what you put out. If they don't like it, they can move on. You can't make everybody happy without pissing everyone off. But here's the thing, though. You know what I think, though? I think we will eventually get the Black Widow film, but it'll be oh, probably not till MCU phase maybe three, because I think Scarlett Johansson, if, you're, if you've been tracking, which I think a lot of our uh, super nerds are, you know a lot of contracts are up after Infinity War. I think Scarlett's going to bite the big one. And so they'll probably kill off Black Widow, and then we'll get a new Black Widow down which the has line. happened in uh, the Marvel it, it's, comic And it movies. goes with the comic books. Yeah. Well, I see, if, if that's what they want to do, I think what they should do is phase four. Yeah. Hopefully when this whole Fox thing settles... They can just decide phase four is going to be straight cosmic. And they don't even do anything on Earth. And then they could give us a Red Room television show. Ooh. Trippy. Like, 
Bro. Black Widow story would work much Netflix? better. Netflix? Yes, would work yeah. much better episodically oh. where you can get gritty and you can do those, like, you know, kind of cliffhanger so style. Build episodes. it up through that show and then. And have this, I mean, that kind of story works better as a show where you can build it up and then, like, have a climax, have it come to a conclusion. And not everything needs to be a movie. That's true. That's true. Adam, you know what? Bro, you, you got me. And I think the fact, like I said, I want them to go cosmic because though they can focus on the Earth stuff with the Netflix style shows and uh, rebuild it from the ground up because now you are using street level heroes to redefine your planet after it's all war torn from the Infinity event. True. Fair enough. Or, or they could wipe the slate completely clean because it is the gauntlet, you know? Mm-hmm. They could rewrite history. Or, and with Strange now, with what they did, you know? I mean, but they're not DC. Because mm. that was, but that, isn't that what they did with the the big world expanding event in Marvel? I forgot what storyline that was. Which one? But they rewrote this. They eliminated six one six. Oh, um, and Ultimate. They Secret it. Wars. Yeah, Secret Wars with. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it really wasn't. It wasn't quite a reboot. But I don't see them taking their movie franchise in that direction. If they get to a point to where I mean. That'd be tough to do on the big screen. It would, and also, yeah. it would be Thanos being the one to do it. Why would yeah. he do it? If he has cosmic infinite power, I mean, why is he going to reset time? Then we... Well, didn't Black Panther, go- like, I'm sorry, didn't Black Panther get the gauntlet at the end of it and stop Thanos, and didn't, like, he do something um, like that? Yes, um, what yeah, they revealed also- is that what the God of the Dead can really do. Mm-hmm. And the God of the Dead can summon the Marvel Zombies. Uh, that's right. I remember that. Oh, my gosh. And the Marvel Zombies can So now it's even anyway. cooler stuff happening, too, that they could... You know what? Yep. We'll see. Marvel's been doing it right, so, you know, mm-hmm. I, 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 we won't tear the seal keep, away. Keep doing it. But anyway, Final draft from them. Red <laughs> Sparrow in theaters this weekend. Go catch it. It'll be a fun spy flick no matter how you like it. Or maybe it's going to be a, a psychological th- thriller. Could be both. It's going to be awesome. Jennifer Lawrence. Support, so, support so. his girl. <laughs> so, Love you. She's starting. Second uh, film coming out this weekend is Death Wish, starring Bruce Willis. You know, Basically, family man turns vigilante psycho killer. I'm okay with this. I- I'm okay with it. I mean, we love Punisher. It's something I would do if you yeah. took out, if you try to take out my. It's family. the guy from Unbreakable. I really want to see. <laughs> that movie sucked. <laughs> Bruce well, Willis. Well, and it also just seems like Bruce Willis returning to his good old wheelhouse. Yeah, like, it's going back to that. You know, you're looking angry again. Yeah, we we like Bruce angry. We love Bruce. Angry. But and he has a. I mean, if you haven't seen the trailer for it, he has justifiable reason. People keep dying around him. He's like, what are they doing about it? Uh, well, now, evidence. Now he I got evidence. Into an evidence. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, going to be a fun romp uh, through an action-packed uh, movie. Go see it. Have fun. See Bruce Willis put on a good, violent show. Yeah, he'd do his best Charles Bronson. Did any of you see the original with Charles Bronson? I have not seen it. I've only heard I it. I kind of want to go back and see it before I see this one. Kind of the same so, thing. That's what yeah. I was going to say. We're going to do it together. Elliot and I, we're going to check it out. You heard him. Give you our review we're doing it together. before we see Death Wish. Yeah. And your windows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you're not wanting to go out to the theater and you want to stay at home and you want to just go pick up something out of your Red Box or Best Buy or Target, wherever you shop at, some dope movies really coming out this week uh, uh, to, to pick up. And quite a few of them I've seen, and I actually enjoy, actually, the majority of them. First up, Coco. Great animated Pixar right. feature Can't Disney. Argue. 12-year-old boy named Miguel. Dreams of becoming a famous guitar player despite the misgivings of his close-knit family. Runs away, gets this guitar, but he goes into the land of the dead. Really cool story. I don't want to give away too much, but I love this movie and the song from it. Oh my gosh, it'll bring you to tears. Uh, I know more tears talk. Yeah. Because you know, there's, a really, there's, a, there's a really sad video I saw on Facebook involving that song, and I wanted to die. Bro. <laughs> I will say this though, Tugs as, the heartstrings. as someone who works with kids, it's definitely going to be a, a film I pick up and then keep in my collection. Yes, because it's something I love to experience and something I would love to experience with a, a class full of kids if we have like a slow day after testing or something. Yeah, awesome. Well, totally it's a great, it's a great way to you know culturally enlighten other people mm-hmm. without, oh, yeah. without being like, oh, here's a lesson. Yeah, I don't want to browbeat you. I want to expose you to culture. Yeah, yeah. An amazing reflection of Hispanic culture. I love the film. It was a great film. So totally recommend Coco. Uh, next up, I didn't see this movie, Murder on the Orient Express, but I wanted to. Uh, so I know you know the book. Go ahead. There's the book. There was actually a, I believe it was a 1960s uh, version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so there, this is a remake of that. Um, but I've heard it was, in a fa- well, I know it's fantastic. I saw it. Fun all the way through. Um, Give them different- synopsis. I don't need to read this. You well, know, it's basically a Clue, but on a train. There you go. <laughs> Starring. Uh, as it's funny? an amazing cast. <laughs> as funny? 
Uh, eh, different funny. <laughs> it was written by Agatha Christie, but it features Penelope Cruz, William Defoe, Judy Dench, Josh, Johnny Depp, Josh Gad, Derek Jacoby, Leslie Odom Jr., Michelle Pfeiffer, and Daisy Ridley, aka Ray from Star Wars. I mean, we got Josh Gad. There might be one joke. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, he was a yeah. the Frozen guy. Olaf. Olaf. Yeah. But just an amazing cast. That's what made yeah. me want to see it. Amazing cast, ahead. and it's a solid uh, story mm-hmm. worth retelling. Yeah. No, it wasn't Agatha. I mean, it's a classic Christmas. story. Yeah. And so. Definitely worth seeing just because of the star power of the cast and just the solid story that you're going to see. So definitely uh, worth seeing. I enjoyed it. I'm probably going to pick it up uh, for myself, um, you know, when my teacher's salary isn't being drained. Um, to help, Wait, help did you get a salary? I know, right? I thought we fixed that problem. It's a freeze. I never the read volunteer. Murder in the Orient, on the Orient Express. I've heard about it, nor have I seen the film, so... I, I, I know it's a classic, and so this will be my first introduction to it. So it stands by it. It's a good, and solid first introduction. Okay, cool. So does it hold up to the to the original material? I would say so. Okay, I would say so. It's very faithful, and it does pace itself to a more modern audience. Okay, so it's it's kind of a little. So it's more of a true adaptation of an interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, but it cool. still follows all the same characters and all okay. the same storylines. But it brings it into our more modern sensibilities of camera style, of uh, camera work, lighting. So it's shot direction. really well. It looks really yeah, good. Yeah, it's everything you want to see out of a more modern uh, retelling. Okay. I can't wait. Cool. Looking forward to it. Next one up, Darkest Hour. The his- this historical drama from director Joe Wright focuses on the trials of Winston Churchill, played amazingly by Gary Oldman. I'm a huge fan of Gary Oldman. When I saw this film, it was one of the films I voted uh, for the SAG After Awards, and it's up for an Oscar coming up soon. It, you wouldn't believe that this guy, Winston Churchill, is Gary Oldman. He does not look like himself. Um, Just Oldman Gary does. Oldman is your reason to see this movie. There you go. Um, so Winston Churchill, soon after he becomes prime minister of the UK, uh, the Nazi armies are rolling through Europe. Basically, if you saw Dunkirk, this is the story behind Dunkirk, where you know you, you need to save those people over there on the, the beaches of Dunkirk. And you have Winston Churchill trying to get them to safety back to the homeland of England before the Nazis come strolling in. And it's just played fantastically by Gary Oldman. I cannot say enough. The special effects, the, what, the, what they did with makeup to make him look like Winston Churchill was just fascinating. I will say, though, that... And if you're history buff, like I am, you're going to totally check this out. Dude, yeah. have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you know Darkest Hour. Yeah. Fantastic movie. Yeah, but I will just say that... Especially in our current day and age, yeah, I feel like World War II dramas are both necessary, but also a little browbeating. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's sort of a modern time, so it clashed with it, the uh, source material thing. Um, I mean, it was a really strong, powerful moment in history, mm-hmm. and it was a very strong, powerful moment on film. But I can kind of understand how a certain uh, section of the audience, especially if you're very politically active, mm. might want to take a pass on this film for a year or two until things uh, calm down a little. Yeah. Because it can definitely uh, seem a little charged what with uh, the um, in- looming Nazis in the background of the, the <laughs> film. So, yeah. you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Watch it for Gary Oldman. Watch it for his spectacular and very realistic uh, portrayal of it, uh, Churchill. And no surrender. On to the next <laughs> one. Tagline. Uh, another fantastic film. Uh, my second probably favorite film that was up for awards uh, this year outside of uh, The Lady in the Water. I'm thinking, why did I say Lady in the Water? Not The Lady in the Water. The Fish in the Water. What the fuck is The one that I love so much. The Ape Sapien movie. The Ape Sapien movie. <laughs> <laughs> Shape of Water. Shape of Water. Why did I think Lady in the Water? Isn't that that terrible M. Night Shyamalan film? No, yeah, no, with no. the guy with the big arm. Yeah! Oh my goodness. And the little girly arm. All right. <laughs> As I, Shape of Water, if you've been watching you know, the, the show, is my favorite film this year for the Oscars and sag But my second film after that is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Um, it stars Frances McDormand. Um, basically, she puts up these three billboards along this highway. Um, because she's trying to solve the murder of her child, her daughter. She calls people out on shitty work. And so, yeah, she calls out this police sheriff, played amazingly by Woody Harrelson, who's one of my favorite actors. Woody can do no wrong. And, yeah, he calls him calls him out, and the, the billboards, you know, get burned, but then it gets put back up. It's just played fantastically. You have this other cop that works Sam in the Rockwell. same precinct with uh, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, who's an amazing actor. It's just a great character, dark comedy 
drama piece that's just the yeah. amazing. If you haven't seen it, have you seen it? I have not. It's, it's on my list to see. You need I've, to see it, bro. I've only seen the scene where they show the part where she storms in yeah. and she starts just chewing Sam Rockwell, a new asshole. And yes. then she, the she's like, you can't let her talk to you like that. And he's like, well, I did. <laughs> Bro, it's a great film. Did you see it? No. I it's Highly like recommend. Was. Highly. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Kyle yeah. of Sam Rockwell. Dude, you're going to love that then. Yeah. Sam Rockwell kills it. Ever since my, my, my first interaction with him back in Green Mile. Yes. So, another franchise film. So, my two recommendations of the films that are up for awards this season that you must watch, Shape of Water and Three Billboards Outside Edmond, Missouri. I can't recommend enough. All right. Last if you don't film, like it, he'll give you a dollar. Yeah, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> All right, last up. I didn't see this film, but I'm kind of... Uh, it, it looks cool, and especially with the people involved. Hangman, a veteran homicide detective played by Al Pacino and his younger partner, Cal Urban, a.k.a. Judge Dredd, investigate a chain That's of murders weird. committed by a serial killer who leaves behind clues related to the children's game, Hangman. The case eventually reveals a connection between the culprit and the older cop. It's uh, directed by Johnny Martin, and it also co-stars Brittany Snow, Sarah Shahi, and Joe Anderson. So not to throw shade, did this go to the theater? I don't know. I don't think so. So I yeah, <laughs> yeah I've that's never like, heard of it before. No, but Al Pacino and Judge Dredd yeah, together. Yeah, how did we miss that? How did it not come to the theater? Yeah, it sounds like somebody lost a bet. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> so and sitting around Hangman, which is a game that I played as a yeah. kid, and you played it. Well, yeah, I think we've all the, played that. It's one of those psycho thrillers that it feels like, especially with the casting, it could get me very easy to get into and like. Yeah, but where was it? Like, see, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, where is this? I want to watch it. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's, well, it's out on Blu ray DVD. Why they didn't come to theaters? I guess we'll to find out. How did we miss this? Yeah. So, Someone this is a movie like, I'm going to check. know out. if we missed something on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't heard of it. And I mean, so I probably won't buy it. I don't it. follow them, but I mean, I would at least be aware because, I mean, yeah. people love Carl Urban, so I would have heard about that. Well, that needs yeah. Al Pacino. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? <laughs> so, you're probably not going to want to buy it. It could, and, because, because you don't, unless you were aware of it, unlike us. So, I, this is definitely a red box rental if I see it in the red box. Yeah. And then I'll, buy, okay. yeah. And then I'll add to my collection if it's in it as good as we think. Exactly. Just, yeah. I'll then go and buy it. Yeah. Um, other than that, if you're a fan of anime, manga, Attack on Titan Guilty. season two is out on Blu ray. To all my anime nerd friends out there and all my anime nerds in general, you know how awesome this series is. You know, Attack on Titan has been one of the most high, it has been one of the highest most celebrated anime series of the past few years. If you love it, you are got to buy the DVD box set. If you don't love it, well, you know, there's other fish in the sea. But bottom line, it's quality. We love it. Get it. I still need to check out season two, but here's all I got to say. All the purists out there that lose their mind over Attack on Titan, it's really simple. Nobody said it was the best thing ever. They just said, I enjoy it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with enjoying something. I'm not saying it's groundbreaking because last time I checked, most animes fit like one of three tropes. So, but no, it's one, a fun one, little story. One of five. Okay. One of five. <laughs> Let's be generous here. But it's also, it's also, you know, one thing doesn't have to be bad for another to be good. Enjoy it for what it is. Watch yeah. it. We're all fans. Yeah, that's what kills me. Just all the people that just automatically hate yeah. on it because there's the one guy that's like, oh, it's the best thing since ever. And I'm like, can't you just still enjoy something because it's fun? Yeah. I still like, got to watch season one. I know. I hey, all I know is back. the first time I saw somebody get bitten half like a Snickers, I was like, I, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it does look cool from what I've seen. It does. And it's actually, I think the thing that brings Attack on Titan uh, to the fore in what made it really capture people's attention and really bring itself in, out of obscurity was just the sheer novelty of the universe it built around it. Yeah, gender neutral giants. Gender neutral giants. Sweet. You know, it's also the technology they're using. You mm -hmm. know, it's this kind of weird steampunk, kind of weird high flying trapeze artist sort of thing that we haven't really seen before. And apparently, everybody's got necks of steel. Yeah. <laughs> G Force is up the wazoo, <laughs> but I'm okay. And so I slam into a giant. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. It was really easy to get absorbed into it because it's not something I've really seen before. Okay. Again, not the best thing in the world, but super fun to watch yeah. and really just captured my imagination. Yeah. Awesome. Same. I, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> and I still got to watch season one before I get down with season two. Do it. Do I know. It. All do right. It. If you're not going to the theater, if you're not picking up those DVDs, what can they do for those gamers out there? You can pick up some Doritos and some Mountain Dew oh. and follow up on some games we got coming up. <laughs> so, let's see what we got coming up this week. We got Payday 2 on Nintendo Switch. I've always wondered how Nintendo some days like, decides, you know what, let's just put some of the most adult content on our console. Yeah. 
I'll be honest with you. Because the Switch is a kid's, more of a kid's console. Well, no. I'll be honest with you. It, I think this is one of those things where they're trying to cater to us. You know, no, yeah, the they're trying to get the more hardcore games yeah, in. Yeah, Because I think one of the biggest complaints adult nerds have had is, you know, I love the Switch. It's a great looking system. But there's only like one game I would want to play it on or play on it. You know, and for me, that was Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I still haven't bought myself a Switch because I've been borrowing a friend's. You know, I still haven't really gotten to play it, Legends of Zelda. That's one of those things where if there were more games available, more third-party games, more content yeah. overall, I would be okay with it and putting money down on a Switch. My very sparse, very empty bank account full of money um, on a Switch. And it's most, and I think this is like a step in the right direction on it. I will say I find the choice of Payday to a little dubious. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like when they went Doom recently, I was like, Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, but great. I heard it plays great like, on there, but like Doom, I can get into. But Payday as a series and as a few games was a little rough to play through. Yeah. No. I mean, it's a very repetitive. If you're going to play something it's a shooter, shooter, uh, shooter? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a heist planning uh, simulation where you and uh, a team of friends. It's a Grand Theft Auto clone. Yeah. Oh, but okay. I'm not focused specifically on planning and executing the heists. And nine out of ten times, all the heists I ever participated in in the game devolved into bloody murder fests, where everyone was just like, okay, we're going to go and kill everyone so they can't call the cops. Yeah. You know, like the classic meme, how I start a silent mission, how I end it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, I feel like it was a good idea for a game, but due to players... Yeah, no, I, I, I already yeah, yeah. Like, they, they probably would have find something a little more groundbreaking, like when they did that uh, game on the uh, Wii with the guy with the chainsaw that was in black and white. Uh, yeah, yeah, no oh, more heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that and then there was the other black, white, and red one. I know what you're talking about. I can't. Yeah, remember yeah, the name yeah. Of it. yeah. I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, but that game like was rated M because like, oh, by the way, this game's black, white, and blood. That's it. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah, so we got Payday 2 coming out on the Switch, and it pretty much covered it. Build your underworld, crime syndicate, with Payday 2 for Switch. This first person shooter lets you build up with three comp. And once again, doing all, it sounds like you're building up on accomplices, and Nintendo's not really the multiplayer format, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it's fun for home, but. Yeah. All right, we're well, moving on. We got Gravel on the Xbox and the PlayStation. Let's see what this is all about. Become an off-road champion in Gravel. It has exotic locations, realistic graphics, and a variety of challenging modes to master. Ensuring long-lasting fun, Gravel has dynamic daytime weather system to enhance gameplay and uses the Unreal 4. So, sounds like if you're into any type of off-road racing, rally car, that kind of stuff, this sounds like a game right for you. I hope I can really see that Gravel spit off the back of my tire. You know? I mean, with Unreal 4, you probably should. That is true. There's been a lot of great graphics coming out of Unreal 4 games. So. Yeah. yeah. But you know, don't worry, bro. I'm going to fly around the corner. <laughs> All, All right. of this will be obsolete. <laughs> yes. Then we got moving on. Uh, the Blob. No, not the plane. The Blob. Oh, the Blob. The Blob, blob 2. Uh, part 2? So there's a The Blob 1. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> that one makes it called The Blob. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just so we got Xbox, PlayStation. Save the world for coming a bleak black and white landscape when you play The Blob 2. A co op multiplayer lets you partner with others to bring color back to Prisma City. Well, Prisma City should be colorful. Yeah, I mean, come on. To make it more colorful. Well, yes. twelve single player levels let you use custom paints, patterns, and music to create your own take on things, take on many missions and challenges, and de blah too for a rainbow of fun. Uh, I'm very curious by this synopsis as uh, it didn't yeah. give me anything. Yeah, I got it. There's color, but what am I doing? Yeah, I, I get a feeling like it's a Splatoon ripoff. Ah, uh, this this might be like you know like uh, Leo and the Professionals version of Splatoon. Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can dig it. Hey, moving on. Don't knock twice for PlayStation. Test your nerves to steal for the Don't Knock Twice. This virtual reality game puts you in a house of horror with terrifying surprises around every turn. Oh, Ooh, great. Creepy. Have your puke bucket. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard, but everybody plays VR apparently throws up everywhere. But they knock, they jump back in. So let's see. Um, explore if you dare and let the immersive imaginary and sounds to envelop you. Hidden clues and interactive items in each room help you... Find where your in-game daughter is being held. Play Don't Knock Twice for a supernatural gaming experience you won't soon forget. You're trying to save your daughter? I mean, that oh, just gave me all would... the motivation I ever needed. Yeah. Thrills and chills. If I had the VR, this would be a game I'd want to play. Yeah. I love creepy games like this. So, but I, I hate to tell you, whenever Sony now does a game that involves a daughter, I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> to... I've been before. before. I want to. I own it, but I haven't played it yet. I know. I heard Do you at least so know what the first 10 minutes of the game is? No. Don't so, the we're going to spoil everybody. So, the first 10 minutes of the game is just daughter sitting at home, 
watching TV. All of a sudden, protagonist comes in. And you're like, all right, cool. And they're hanging out. All of a sudden, you find out the world's going to shit. And you're like, oh, damn. Crazy neighbor tries breaking in the back door. And then all of a sudden, dad, daughter, go for a run. And you're like, all right, they're going to make it. Then the next five minutes of these cutscenes, yeah, no, she's dead on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. So within she, five minutes. I thought it was a Nope, daughter. that's not her. So within five minutes, they get you attached to a character you'll never see again. Very heavily attached. Yeah. Like, they, like the, the opening of that game leads you to believe that Joel might die. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I guess I'm playing as her. Yep. So you're playing like a spirit throughout the rest of the no, game? No, yep. just a different, different girl. So it's, oh, what? Yeah. No, that's why this is a type, that's a franchise that needs to be It throws you for a loop? Through. Yeah. And that's why he develops such, that it, de- it explains his character development throughout the game of why he is the way he is. So essentially, he's the kind of person that's like, look, I understand what loss is. I won't do it again. So I'm not going to get attached. But you get attached. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. That just fucked me up. Yeah. Actually, as a player, you get more attached, attached at first. And then you got to make that asshole get attached. And also, when you beat the game, you look at yourself and go, did I just do the right thing? Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's one of those games that makes it you question it, it makes you question your morality at the end of it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Before I get more. I think I'd rather go buy that game than these games. <laughs> There's a reason why it's probably known as the best game ever made. Oh, really? It's, yeah. it's gotten that title. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's really good. Okay. So, moving on for more PlayStation goodness. We but have you're not going to buy because you're going to go get Last of Us like me. We're not, I'm, just, I'm still just playing Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> got my little Palico helping me out, healing me out, calling me meow. Is that cute? I mean, he calls you Meowster. How happy can you get? All right, so Shiny for PlayStation. Spark. Hope. Spark hope for, for fellow robots on Planet Aurora with Shiny for PlayStation 4. Your heroic role as Kramer, 227, lets you resurrect robot friends through your own energy and recharge yourself through depleting power sources. Advance through 20 stages of Shiny to flee Aurora before it crashes into the sun. So, this sounds like just one of those weird puzzle platformers that's being thrown into the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Okay. I totally didn't hear anything. All I heard was Kramer and 227 and being an old guy. Those were TV shows, TV characters. Well, 227 was a, was a show, and Kramer, that he was a character. Character on Seinfeld. That's right. That threw me off. Anyway, I'm sorry. Shiny, not so shiny for me. It doesn't sound like fun. I'll Somebody go, get him. I'll go play Last of Us. Yeah, something. All right. All right, well, now we're going to pass it back to Patrick, because we got events coming up, and hopefully he does that better than the Actually, I'm going to throw it to him to talk about the event, and then you have the other event, because it's really only two events. Well, one event that's this weekend, and one big event that I really want to talk about, because... We're here and we love the shop. But first... All right, so this upcoming weekend <coughs> is a convention that's near and dear to my heart. It's where me and Scott cut our teeth in attending a booth at conventions. It's Virginia Comic Con down in Richmond. It's a fun day. It's a smaller convention. It's not going to be as big as your Awesome Con or your MagFest. But it's a nice, intimate uh, con. You get to go meet artists. You get to go uh, meet vendors. It's a good day to show up. Um, there's a lot of cosplay. There's a lot of uh, other nerds to hang out with. Um, go out and check it out. So yeah. in other words, it sounds like a great con for, especially a first timer, because it's not going to be overwhelming. Yeah, exactly. And you, you get more of the true con experience instead of the mm-hmm. media event, as I call most of these big ones now. Exactly. And you know, I feel like having been to most of the media events, you know, I when I first started going to cons, I heard a lot of old guys bemoaning the lost days of small comic events where people just came to trade in at merch. You know, this is exactly that. There isn't, like, a huge amount of programming. There's a few panels. Yeah, every now and then. There's a costume contest. But for the most part, the day is spent more or less quietly on the floor in costume, roving through goods that you might uh, love. The dangerous dealer's room. So I'll Mm -hmm. add to that. Um, Recently, it was announced that the Collectibles Expo is now a part of Virginia Comic Con. So I think that's a whole new slew of cool collectible things that you'll be able to get at that show. Um, and I've been honored to be a part of them as well for those that, you know, it is a, what it, you, you encapsulated perfectly. It's one of a small show, but yet you still kind of get that cool kind of experience and the ability to get some really cool stuff. But for those that do like some of that other stuff, um, I, I was part of the cosplay, cosplay uh, community down there that attends and you'll want to join in the contest. I had a fun time judging it for like two straight years. It was great. And, uh, uh, you know, some panels here and yeah. there, and a couple of creators here and there. They don't overwhelm me with that because it's more so about the, the content, the, the, the comics, the, the cool collectibles, and that's what you get if you're looking for that. And for me, you know, we get overwhelmed with the big shows. Here, I can just enjoy what I love, and that's what Virginia Comic Con is. Quick shout out uh, to the College of William & Mary. Um, they, their students have been bringing their A-game on the cosplay front. 
Uh, they basically just won the Katsukan Masquerade. Oh, wow. I don't know if they're going to be showing up in force at uh, VA Comic Con, but if they do, you're in for a treat. They're a, a good bunch of kids. All right. And I think right there, that's somebody calling about what's going down here at Painted Visions. Yeah. Why don't you tell them about the big event happening here? So, March 10th, 2018. They want to know. We are having our 20th anniversary sale. Woo! Yes, 20 years in business. For Panic Visions Comics, 17 years in this location. People don't believe it, but it's true. Well, we will have everything, and I mean everything, including this guy, uh, on sale in the store. Uh, so we're looking to uh, see what we can do to bring some great sales to uh, savings for everybody. But the big announcement that we just put out on Monday, we're doing a raffle. Yes. The tickets, $10 a piece. Okay. Or if you drop 50, you get seven entries. Well... Wait till you hear what these titillating prizes are. First place, first pick. Second place, second pick. Third place, the SOL. So, first pick is the choice between an Amazing Spider-Man number two, graded 1.0, signed by Stan Lee. Uh, not the most prestigious book, but it is still an, a key book and, and a very old book. And signed by Stan Lee. And it's signed by Stan Lee, and it's graded. So it's in, it's capsulated, it's not gonna, it's, Great at 1.0. I mean, this is your opportunity to own a piece of history. Yeah. Then, the other item you get to pick from is a $100 gift card. But, I'm sorry, why did I go to that one? Because the other one is Fantastic Four, graded 4.0, featuring the first appearance of Black Panther. Fantastic Four, number 52. What? What? Come fill your Wakanda hype with the little red tickets. You're trying to take all my money, aren't you? And everybody else's. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna lie. This you can't have right. mine. I don't have it either. He's been keeping it from me, people. Yeah, no, I've been teasing him as long as I've been teasing you guys. Man. Wow. So, yes. tickets go on sale the 28th, this Wednesday. Uh, and they will be on sale through the uh, event. And we will be, uh, I believe we'll be cutting ticket sales between 7 or 8. And we'll be do. you do not need to be present when we do the announcement. We will get in touch with you the next day. Please follow us on Facebook to make it easier for us to reach out to you. But, uh, yeah, come in and get some tickets. You can get them beforehand. You don't got to be here the day of. And look, see everybody here on our wonderful event. And give a Black Panther one. First yeah. Friends. Wow. Nice. Wow. I think we'll, we'll definitely have to put 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 the more word out on this. I'm well, actually no. I, I have, want it all for myself. I have not done found it. <laughs> you did. You got me. Check it out. Um, I'll be there. We're also hoping to bring some cosplayers out. It's going to be a fun time. I can't oh yeah, it's going to be a great day. Uh, we should be doing sidewalk sale. And like I said, everything in the store is going to be on sale. We're looking to have a lot of fun. We did it uh, for the 15 year anniversary, and it was a great event. So we're looking to do it again for the community. Awesome. Um, we also have another event. Uh, we have a side video that you'll want to check out where this man goes into greater detail. But Hayfield Comic Con is coming up. Why don't you just kind of give him a brief synopsis on that? Um, well, Hayfield Comic Con is going to be on April 5th, sorry, April 14th of 2018. It is the culmination of an after school program I run for Hayfield Secondary School in Alexandria. The convention is entirely student planned and student run. All I do is I teach them the skills they need to make it happen. So come out, support your next generation of nerds and their, you know, convention. Awesome. I'm, I'm at a loss. I, I, I don't even want to say the rest of this because this guy has been keeping this from me and I'm, I'm just done. So we're going to sign off. That's your episode. Um, let's tell them where they can find us um, after they're done with this and you want to check out all the great content we have on NRW. Uh, Adam. You can find me right here. Pay Comics. What's the address? 3065 Blanska Boulevard. Virginia. Uh, at Painted VNS, I believe, is the Twitter or IG. Hey, guess what? It's on the page right now. Oh, well, there it is. Look over here. Look over there. I forgot that I do that. <gasps> Magic. <laughs> he's, Elliot. Picking, he's still picking his jaw up, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 he, he got me today. <laughs> Tell him where they can find you, Elliot. You can find Hayfield Comic Con on Facebook. We also have a GoFundMe active to help uh, fund the convention. So far, all the money is coming out of my pockets, which, as you know, because I'm a teacher, are very, very shallow. So any... Money you can throw our way to help us buy things for the convention. Tablecloths, snacks, um, more prizes for our raffle, more um, art supplies for our student artists. Anything you guys can uh, give will help us out. And we also have a bunch of uh, reward levels going from uh, noob to nerd. Okay. <laughs> so go to our GoFundMe, check it out, help out a good cause, help out my students.
awesome. Again, greatest teacher of all time, because if I was a student there, this would have been just everything to me. So awesome. Please support Elliot. Good guy. If you're in the Woodbridge, Virginia area, make sure you making uh, Pain of Visions and Adam, your comic shop and your guy to go to for those comics. Uh, to Matt Haley, uh, Marvel DC image comics artist, check out his new series, Black Star Warrior with Dust. The links are, you saw them online, go check them out. And if you love Black Panther and you want to visit Homeland, if you're African American or if you're just us in general, I, I want to go there. I want to go to Wakanda. Go to Wakanda.com. They're going to have an amazing trip Probably set up hot. that you can go and see. And uh, for me, I'm Patrick Michael Strange. New release Wednesday, the NRW, that's the show. And for me personally, if you want to read Mike, because I write and do comics too as well, uh, at, at Temple Four East. Uh, yeah, you just got uh, your, your monthly uh, preview. You um, yeah, I did a comic book back in 2003, and it's got me wanting to write again, and that's kind of why I put it out there, to provoke and let people know. I used to do those things. Yeah, so if you guys actually would like to read it, he put every page on his page. Every, yeah. One by one, every day, you just got to get, get. And now you don't have to wait to see what the next page is going to be. You get to go through them all. Thank you, Adam. I hope you checked it out, and I hope you'll check it out. Read it there. I got more content there for you. Um, yeah, that's us, y'all. Love these guys. We love you. You're watching NRW, and we're out of here, y'all. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Deuces! Oh, <laughs>